Last week, I spoke about faith is the, uh, I mean, praise is the voice of faith. When you begin to praise God, you begin to uh, release your faith. Uh, you can't praise him and not release faith. You can't say, oh, God, I just praise you that you're no good and I'm a miserable person and, and, and uh, God, uh, you know, life is bad. I just praise you for such a bad life. And, you know, that's not praise at all. Praise is faith. When we begin to praise God, our faith goes forward. And, and um, today I want to talk about thanksgiving is the voice of victory. They go together. Praise and thanksgiving go together. Praise is your voice of faith. You know, they begin to praise God, and they circled Jericho, and there's many instruments that, you know, when uh, they went out to war, they sent the musicians before them, and they were praising God, and, and the enemy is scattered before that praise because it's God's people voicing their faith. And um, but I want to talk today about thanksgiving, that it releases God's victory in your life. And uh, we have an example of David at Ziklag. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to talk, tell you the story. Most of you may know it or may not. But David and his men had been out to war. They had been fighting the Philistines. And they came back to their town, Ziklag. And when they got back there, the Amalekites had come and captured the whole city. Didn't kill anybody. They captured the whole city. Men, women, children, all their, their wives, their children, their relatives. And they, they burned the city. And, and they took all the cattle. They, they took everything. So here's these men, you know, they've been out there fighting. They're probably just, because those kind of warfares, who, who, you know, you're swinging the sword all day. <laughs> these guys had to be animals. But anyway, they come back and they're tired. They're physically exhausted uh, in every, every way. And then they find out their families are gone. Their sons, their wives, their daughters, their, everybody, their friends, and, 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 and even everything they owned is burned to the ground, and, and everything, cattle or whatever they own, it's all gone. And, and they were so, it says, in a, afflicted in their soul that they were deciding that they maybe should stone David. Now, I don't know if anybody, but I've never been in that tight a situation before. But I want to tell you something, pressure is pressure. No matter what situation you're in, you can have the same type of pressure that David was under. The circumstances may not be that extreme, but they're that uh, 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 strong or it has that much pressure on you. It's like, like tires, you know, you can take a tire and put that's made to hold only 30 pounds of pressure or 60 pounds, or 120 pounds, and, you know, a 120-pound pressure tire might think, well, you little wimp, you can only hold 30 pounds of pressure, but that's all that 30 pounds of pressure tire can hold, but 30 pounds of pressure is just as powerful to that as it is to the 120 pounds of pressure on that one. They were made differently, maybe different chemical in, in each of us, and, and the thing we have to look at, sometimes we can look at somebody and say, well, get over it, you know. So what? So you're going through that. Let me tell you what I've gone through. And we try to up them, you know, like that. Your little 30 pounds of air pressure, listen, you're, you're nothing yet. But see, that's not love. Pressure's pressure. And wherever your level of faith and, and believing in God is, uh, it determines how much pressure you're going to be able to stand and overcome by faith. And so, you know what, it doesn't matter if maybe somebody just having a hard time paying their bills. Maybe that brings them to such a place that they're like David, and it's just pressure on their life. Or, or maybe it's family, or maybe it's your job, or, you know, pressure's pressure. But here's David. Man, I mean, everything's gone. Family's gone. Everything he owns is gone. And now his own men's about ready to stone him. What did David do? It says he encouraged himself in the Lord. That word encourage there is to make strong, to strengthen. Other translation says strengthen. In other words, David strengthened himself in the Lord. He made himself strong in the Lord. And when he did that, he inquired with the Lord. He brought the ephod and he, he inquired with the Lord. And the Lord said, pursue, overtake, and recover all. Victory came. 
And David went, he pursued, he overcame, he took it all. And not only did he bring his family and the other families and everything that was taken back, he also brought what the enemy, they took that back. Took all of their cattle, took all of their stuff and brought it back. So he came back with as more than a conqueror. Now, how did David encourage himself? Well, turn with me to Psalm 69, 30. Because in Psalms, you begin to see how David encouraged himself over and over and over and over and over again. And here it is in Psalm 69, 30. He said, I will praise the name of God with a song. Praise is the voice of what? Faith. David begins, I can see him in this situation beginning to praise God, beginning to sing a song to God, beginning to sing praises. And the second thing it says and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Will magnify him with thanksgiving. Now, what does it mean to magnify? How many of you ever looked through a magnifying glass? What does it do? It magnifies, right? So David, he said this, I, and I guarantee you this is what he did to strengthen himself. He began to praise God. And then he began to magnify God through thanksgiving. And what was he doing? He was thanking God for who he is. He was magnifying God, not the circumstances. And you see, when we get into pressure, we get into circumstances, we can magnify the circumstance by our words, or we can magnify God. And when God is magnified, victory is sure. When God is magnified, victory is sure. When God is magnified, victory is sure. I said, when God is magnified, victory is sure. You see, I have to keep saying that because some of you said, well, I don't know. Uh, but it didn't. Uh, but remember the but situation? I know God will, but. I know God's for me, but. You've got to reverse that. I know it doesn't look good, but God. I know I may not feel, but God. It may look bad, but God. You begin to magnify God because, see, what you magnify determines your life. If you magnify uh, your own self, uh, uh, not worthy of anything, you begin to magnify yourself. Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm so unworthy. I don't do this. I don't do that. I'm, oh, Lord. And you're magnifying yourself instead of magnifying God. God, I thank you that you've saved me. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you that I'm your son and daughter. I thank you that you've given me the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the word of God. I thank you I have revelation knowledge. I thank you I'm more than a conqueror. I thank you that I'm, I'm forever your child. I thank you that my name's in the book of life. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. Oh, Father, I begin to magnify you in my life. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Father, that, yeah, you've already forgiven me. Yeah, I messed up, but you've forgiven me. Father, there's, a, there's an emptiness in me, but thank you that you fill it up, Lord. You're the, you're the emptiness that, that, that uh, only you can feel, uh, that emptiness in me. Only you can fill it up, and I want to thank you that Christ is in my heart. Thank you that you filled me with the Holy Ghost. Thank you that you're my Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And you get your eyes off of yourself because you magnify God. See, we bring to God our butt. And he can't bless your butt. <laughs> oh, God, I know what your word says, but. Oh, God, I know I'm supposed to prosper, but. Oh, God, I know that, that I shouldn't be lonely, but. Listen. You, you've got to come to God and say, Father, thank you that I am filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you that my bank account will change. Thank you that you're my provider. Thank you that you're my healer. Thank you that you're my strength. Thank you that you encourage me. Thank you that you strengthen me. Thank you that I'm your child. Thank you that I'll live with you forever. Thank you that I'm more than a conqueror. Thank you that I'm above, not beneath. Thank you I'm the head, not the tail. Thank you that you go before me in every situation. Thank you the walls of Jericho come down 
down in my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you begin to magnify God. And when all of a sudden the, the devil throws to you, just remember what you did. Thank you, Father, you removed the shame of my youth. Thank you that you've healed me. Thank you that you've forgiven me. Thank you that I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Thank you that I stand innocent before you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your son. I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. Thanksgiving brings victory into your life. Thanksgiving magnifies God. Thanksgiving sets you free. Thanksgiving brings you over, not under. Hallelujah. Whew. Something's got a hold of me. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Psalm 136. It's awesome. This is awesome. We're going somewhere. God's preparing us for a great end time revival. This America is going to uh, experience a great awakening. It's awesome. Look at this. This is David again. I believe this is what David's doing when he's encouraging himself. He's strengthening himself in the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And the word, the word Lord there is Jehovah, the great God Jehovah. Oh, give thanks to the great God Jehovah, for his mercy endureth forever. Thank God for his mercy. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. The word God there is Elohim. Give praise to the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He is the God of all gods. And in fact, God said, I've looked all over the every place there is to look. I don't see any other God. I must be God. He's the God of little so-called gods. He is God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He's Elohim. And we've been created into his image and likeness. Let's make them in our image and likeness. Let's put our spirit in them. Let's put our word in them. Let's put our likeness in them. Let's make them like ourselves. And Jesus came back to say, come on, I'm the firstborn among many brethren. Begin to thank me that you're like me. Begin to proclaim my name, live my name, be my name, live in my spirit, full of my spirit. As I am in heaven, you are on earth begin to thank me that I am your God I am your Elohim I am your everything come on <laughs> then it says oh give thanks to the Lord of hosts for his mercy endureth forever the Lord of Lords that word there is Adonai the God who rules in the book of Revelations Somebody riding on a white horse. King of kings. Lord of lords. The great I am. The son of the living God. I am the king of kings. I am the Lord of lords. I am the king of glory. And you are riding with me on your great white horses. As he is, you are. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Your mercy endureth forever. Glory to God. If God is for you, who can be against you? Only you can be against yourself. The only one. But when you begin to thank him and praise him, victory's into your coming into your life. Look at this. He begin, now he goes through a list here. To him who alone doth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. He's the wonder working God. He's the God that does miracles. He's the God that heals the sick and raises the dead. He's the God that casts out demons. 
He's the God that does miracles in the midst of people. He's the God that does signs, wonders, and miracles. He's the God who delivers, sets free, sanctifies, strengthens. He is the God of wonders. Thank you. To him by wisdom made the heavens for his mercy and earth forever. David said, how can anybody look at the stars and believe there's not a God? He said, that person's a fool. He doesn't know God. He's the God who created all this. Oh, to him that stretches out the earth above the waters for his mercy and earth forever. To him that made the great lights, the stars, for his mercy and earth forever. The sun to rule by day for his mercy and earth forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night for his mercy and earth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn for his mercy and earth forever. Remember, David's talking about God, the one who brings victory. And brought our, out Israel from among them for his mercy and endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm for his mercy and endureth forever. Listen, God, by, listen to these words, by a strong hand and a stretched out arm, he has brought you out of darkness into light. He's brought you out of the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of his dear son by his outstretched mighty arm. Glory to God. He said, I looked among men. There was none that would stand in the gap. So he said, with my own arm, I'll bring salvation. I will deliver. I will redeem. For I am the God who heals and sanctifies and sets free. Glory to God. With his great outstretched arm by the blood of his son, we are redeemed. Glory to God. And the redeemed of the Lord are supposed to say so. I can't buy gas. I'm redeemed, glory to God. All the, all, the, all the food is gone. I'm redeemed, glory to God. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Thank God I am blessed. Thank God I am blessed. Thank God I am blessed. Hallelujah. If anytime you want to run, just jump up and run, glory to God. Somebody last week said, I just felt like running. I said, you should have. Maybe everybody else would run with you. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. Glory to God. God's striking us instead of fire. I got calmed down about to blow up. You don't know how powerful this is. I feel like on the inside I'm about ready to... It's just so strong. God's doing something new in me. I love it. Whew, that's a lot of start boiling on the inside. Steam start coming out. Glory to God. Something great's going on in me. To him which divided the Red Seas into parts for his mercy endureth forever. I love this. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it for his mercy endureth forever. You may see, a, there may be a Red Sea in front of you. There may be situations in front of you. But God is still the God who parts the Red Sea, who makes a way for you to walk through it in victory. For the Lord is your great, I am that I am. And he's the one that can part the Red Sea, can... Make it go dry ground. You can walk through your situations. You can walk through no matter what it is. And you will get on the other side. And that which came after you, your enemy will be drowned in the name of Jesus. He's still the same God. And his mercy endureth forever. Man, that's just awesome. But he overthrew Pharaoh and his hosts in the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. <laughs> to him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. Do you ever feel like you're in a wilderness? Well, God's leading you through it. 
God's with you. He's the pillar of fire by night, the cloud by day. The Holy Ghost is with you. He's in you. He's lurking through you. He's taking you through it. You will come through it. This has come to pass. You're just passing through it, and you're going to come to the other side, and you're going to come out victorious because Thanksgiving is a voice of victory, and it doesn't matter what you're in right now. You're coming through it by the great God Jehovah who's bringing you into victory, bringing you into salvation, bringing you into your deliverance because you're his son, you're his daughter, and he has said, I will bless you. Amen. <sighs> to those whom smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever, and slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Shion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever, and Og, the king of e uh, the, uh, whoever they are, for his mercy endureth forever. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest that he would destroy the works of the prince of this world, the devil. And it says this, that the judgment has come to the world, that the judge, the, the prince of this world has been judged He's been robbed of his authority. He's been stripped naked. He's been paraded before heaven as a defeated foe, him and all of his angels, his demons. And Jesus Christ has arisen, the victorious, triumph, son of the living God. And he lives on the inside of you and me, and we stand victorious in him. He's destroyed that devil. He's destroyed his kingdom. He's taken his power, and he says, now you go in my name. I've given you power and authority. Go. Cast out demons. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Lay hands on the sick, and they'll recover. Glory to God. This, this, our enemy has been destroyed. And he gave their land for an inheritance, for his mercy endureth forever. Even an inheritance unto Israel, his servant, for his mercy endureth forever. Listen to this. We have an inheritance. In fact, we are God's inheritance. And it says this, that we are Heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus. Church, we have an inheritance. We have heaven. We have the very presence and power of God living on the inside of us. We have the word of the living God. We have an inheritance, and we can possess the land. We can, wherever our feet trod, we can possess it. God says we are his children of inheritance. We are those that bring grace and mercy to the world. We're the ones that releases God into a victorious uh, 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 way into people's lives. When I give thanks unto God, I always walk in victory. When I praise God, I always release the voice of faith. God is for me. Who can be against me? Only one person in this room can be against you, and that's you. I was thinking this morning, talking to the Lord, and I said, you know, God, your hardest piece of work is your people. <laughs> you know, he can command the sea to be still. He, I mean, they all obey him. We're the only ones that can argue with him. And be stubborn. And just do our own doggone thing. Think about this. This little piece of flesh that Rich Van Winkle lives in. It, it's just, this is his workmanship. And he says, oh, son, man, I'll tell you what. If you don't get on the potter's wheel, I can't do anything with you. Forget that. Don't, don't think that you're the potter and I'm the clay. No, you're, you're the clay. I'm the potter, son. Amen. I mean, I don't know about you. I've jumped off that wheel more than once. Then back on it. He's molding me and jump off again. Why? Because he touches something in me I don't like. When I taught art, and, and the first thing you do with clay is you, you meet it. It's like with, with making bread. And what are you looking for? You're looking for little hard spots in the clay. 
so that you can, you can uh, soften it and soften it and soften it and soften it. Because what happens is if there's a hard spot you don't get out, when it goes into fire to be uh, treated, burn, I mean, ready to mix it strong, those hard spots will make the thing explode. See, some of us jump off the wheel and then we get back on it. Because when God touches a, a spot in our heart that we don't want to surrender to him, we, we don't let the great I am touch that area and meet it and work it out of our lives. And as a result of it, we're just stuck with our hard spot, no matter what it is. Loneliness, fear, anxiety, it doesn't matter. Only God can take that hard spot of the flesh out and replace it with himself. That we are so full of God. We are so full of him that we begin to give thanks. And when I get on the potter's wheel, I stay there now. I really do because I give him thanks. And when he hits that hard spot, I go, ooh, thank you, Lord. I didn't know that was there, but you're working it out. Glory to God. Thank you that I need change in that area. Thank you that that needs to change. Thank you that you're the one that's working in me. Thank you that you're conforming me to your image and likeness. Thank you you're making me just like yourself. Oh, glory to God. Thank you that you just touched an area in my life that's not like you. I just let, thank you, Lord. Go ahead, Holy Spirit. Just break it right out of me. Thank God. He loves us and he disciplines us and he chastens us. The flesh has no place in our life and the Holy Ghost will make sure the flesh will be gone if we'll let him do it. Hallelujah. He don't have no problem with the nations. He don't have no problem with he, but it's his children. Man, we're, we're that piece of work and his grace will do it all if we'll let it. Thank God for the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. For his mercy endureth forever. Who remembered us in our lowest state. Now, has anybody been in the lowest state? Yes, you have. If you say you haven't, you're a liar. Every one of us, as long as we live on this earth, we go through some things. Maybe it's in your marriage. Maybe you want to get married. Maybe you don't want to be married. Whatever it is. Maybe you, maybe you uh, don't have the food. Maybe you, don't, maybe you think God's forsaken you. Whatever the situation you're in, listen, God knows your low estate. And what does he want to do? He wants to lift you out of it because his mercy endureth forever. God is for you for your good. He's never against you. God is always for you, always for you, always for you. And when we give him our lowest state by thanking him that the greater one's in us, thank you, Father. When you begin to do that, he lifts you up into victory. He, he lifts you up into victory. <clears throat> I've been, I've been uh, you know, any of us that want to live by faith, we're going to have to use our faith. And our faith is tested. And I like what Andrew says, if you don't have a test, you don't have a money. <laughs> Testimony. <laughs> and it's a triumph of our faith that brings victory. You got to understand what's going on. You count it all joy. Why? Because you already know you won. You fight the good fight of faith. Why? I've already won. I've already won when I begin to thank him. I already have seen the, the great I am that I am rise before me. I begin to see Jesus going before me by the power of the Spirit and his word. I begin to see his word going out there and accomplishing all that he sends it to do. I release that word through faith. I release it, <clears throat> and I'm seeing the word of God working. Whether I see it with these eyes or feel it in myself, the word is working. God is working. He's working for you. He's going to set you free. He's going to bring you over. He's going to bring you into deliverance. He's going to bring you into possess the land land of Canaan in the, your promise. You're looking for a mate, let God find you one. You pick your own out, use the MS. If you're looking for the world to bless you in any way, you're looking in the wrong place. It's God that's blessed you. You got a good job, praise God for it. God gave you that job. Well, I believe I got it myself. Well, I'm sorry. You feel that way. Probably if you got it yourself, you're miserable. God gave you a job. It's a good place. Glory to God. He remembers where, he knows where you're at, church. But his promise is to take you out of it, put you above it, make you more than a conqueror. And hath redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endureth forever. 
listen, our enemies, we know the devil is, but he's defeated. Our enemies is, is those that we can make ourselves. For instance, when God spoke to, to Israel, he said, because you did not serve me with thanksgiving and praise and rejoicing, you will serve your enemies. And here's the point. What is your enemy? Is it depression, discouragement, self-righteousness, pride? Whatever it is, that's your enemy. Your flesh is your enemy. And, and, if, and if you don't begin to thank God, you will serve that enemy. You'll serve depression. You'll serve self. You'll serve anger. You'll serve unforgiveness. You'll, those are your enemies, church. And, and when you don't begin to thank God and, and thank him for it, you will serve your enemy, and that enemy is depression. It'll hurt you. It, it's, it's loneliness or whatever it is. That's an enemy to you. The Lord spoke to me years ago about my old man. He said, son, unless you know your old man's an enemy, you'll never get rid of him. You'll always set a, a place for him at your table. But I'd rather taste and see that the Lord is good. I want Jesus at my table. I want God sitting and breaking bread with me. I don't have time to let the flesh eat with me anymore. I, and, and when he shows up, I just quickly have the servants, the angels of God, just take him, throw him out the front door. Glory to God. He has no place in my house, my heart, or any part of my being. And I'm telling you right now, God begins to show me in things in my own life as I'm being transformed to his image and likeness. He just puts his fingers on some things and says, son, now this needs to be transformed. And I'm like, okay. I'll give it to you, Lord, because I've learned what I give to him, he turns into victory because he turns it into himself. He turns it, and that's whose nature I'm in. You can hang on to whatever you want to hang on to, but I tell you right now, that's your enemy. You know, especially unforgiveness, <clears throat> that's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Just bless them and let them go. You know, they don't care anything anyway. It's you that's got a problem. Just let it go. Why? Because I can receive of the one who's forgiven me. I can receive of his forgiveness. Therefore, I can forgive others. I can receive of his mercy. Therefore, I can show mercy. I can receive of his truth. Therefore, I can release truth. I can receive his grace. I can give grace. I can receive mercy. I can give mercy. I can receive love. I can give love. Are you getting this? I can release to others what I've allowed Lord to release into my life. Glory to God. All of us have been hurt by somebody. You got hurt the minute you got come out of your mother's womb. That was a painful situation. Your head got scrunched and, and, and distorted, and, and you went through this tube that you don't, don't fit very well, and you get pushed through it. Now, what they do it anymore, they used to lift you up and smack your bottom, make sure you cried. Man, you came into the world through travail. It was miserable. You came out of your happy little womb, comfortable in your mommy's love and everything, and then you come into this world, just smacks you around. We were born in adversity. And Jesus said, as long as you're on the earth, there's going to be tribulation. Why? Because we're not of the earth. We got born into the kingdom of God. So the people of the world don't like Jesus. They don't like you and me. Just get over it. And begin to thank you. Thank, look at a way to serve them with love. Look at a way to bless them. Look at a way to help them, not to curse them. God is for you. Who can be against you? Only you. You just need to quit shooting yourself in the foot and let God heal you. Let God strengthen you. Begin to thank him that he's for you. Thank him that he's there for you. Thank you that he's conforming you to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that he's working in you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Who giveth food to all flesh for his mercy endureth forever. You know, God is a kind, good God. Now, and oh, give thanks unto God of heaven for his mercy endureth forever. Listen, when the, when the disciples came back, they're casting out demons, they're doing all these things, and they come back and say, Lord, Jesus, even the demons were subject to us. Awesome. And Jesus said, don't rejoice in that. He said, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Thank God to the God of heaven. We're just passing through right now. Now, it's important what we do while we're passing through. 
We've got a work to do by the Holy Ghost, but it's his work. But we have an eternal home. We have an eternal place of rest. We have an eternal place where God dwells. And listen, church, when we all get there, we're going to be just like him. We're going to have a glorified body that lives forever. We're going to be just like him. We're going to be with the marriage. Just think of the great marriage that's going to take place in heaven when the father presents us to his son. And all the eyes is on us. That ought to be humbling. That ought to be humbling. But when you go to a, a, a wedding, who do you stand up for? Who's all decked out in white and lace and beautiful? The bride. Who's everybody waiting for? Who's the last one to enter? The bride. Who's the first one to enter? Bridegroom. Waiting for the bride. It's a picture of Christ in the church. And listen, you can't present yourself without spot, wrinkle, and blemish to God. I've tried iron myself out, and then I burned myself one time right there. I was ironing a shirt. I remember somebody in the church said, uh, how did you do that? And I said, well, I, I didn't know you were supposed to not put the shirt on. You can't iron yourself. You can't straighten out your wrinkles. You can't take care of your blemishes. You can't do none of that. It's Jesus who is presenting you to himself without spot, wrinkle, and blemish. So, therefore, it's up to him to present you to himself. It's up to you and I to want to be presented. Like you, you precious, I've, I've, done, I've done some of your weddings in here, and, and oh, I could just see the, the love. I watched them, and they come up here together, and, and the minute that bride starts walking, that guy's just, boy, his eyes on her. And her eyes are on him. I watch them. I love it. And they're smiling at each other. And they get up here and they're just, just, they're just loving each other. Because she's coming. And he's receiving her. And our Lord Jesus is ironing us out. Because he's presenting us to himself. And that's awesome. I don't have to pick. The difference is I don't have to pick my own dress out. I've got the robe of righteousness. I'm bedecked with the jewels of heaven. The gifts of the Holy Ghost. Just all over me. I'm filled with just his eyes are on me. He's making me beautiful. I know that's hard for guys to imagine. But listen, folks. He's, he's making us his bride beautiful to himself. And all we have to do is say, thank you. I love that dress. Oh, thank you. I love that necklace. Oh, thank you. I love that beautiful jewel. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're making me like you. You're presenting me to yourself. Glory to God. And then I quit trying to present myself. <laughs> and I refuse this thing of some people saying, well, Jesus has got this old, ugly, Haggy looking bride, I just rebuke those words. He's got a beautiful bride that he's presenting to himself. So I'm only going to see you beautiful. I'm going to see you presented to the Lord. By the grace of God, I'm going to see you as he sees you. And in his eyes, you're beautiful. You're awesome. You're his bride. And, and uh, the father is just, the day will come and he'll say, okay, son, it's time. Go get her. She's all yours. Glory to God. Father, I want to, oh, my goodness. Thank <laughs> Ah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Father, I want to thank you that you chose us. We didn't choose you. Even while we were yet in our sins, you loved us with an eternal love. You even then purposed that we would be seated at your right hand in your son. And, Father, here is love, not that we loved you, but you first loved us. I pray this morning, Lord, that you have stirred your people up to praise and thanksgiving, to expect you to do in their life what is impossible for them to do. 
but we will be a people as thanksgiving and praise that will always have faith and will always magnify you, our God, who always gives us the victory in Christ Jesus. Do you agree with that? Say amen.